The first problem on the practice test is from chapter 18. This deals with testing a mean or confidence intervals with a mean. It's important to always identify what chapter you're dealing with because then you'll know what formulas to use and you'll know what the notation is. Let's look at what the problem asks. It talks about doing a hypothesis test on a single population mean. Now that's your clue right there. This question does not have much context. It's merely doing a test on the mean. So let's look at the values we're given. We are given a hypothesis value for the mean, and that for us will be mu naught. We are given an actual estimate, and this is our sample mean. From our output, we know that we observed this, and it's what we actually found. We're not given the degrees of freedom, but the problem does tell us there were 28 observations. The formula for degrees of freedom here is n minus one, and this is because it's a one sample t. If it was a two sample t, it would be a more complicated formula. And if it was a chi-squared problem, it'd be rows minus one times columns minus one. Once again, the degrees of freedom will be determined by the type of problem we are doing. So make sure to identify what you're doing from the start. Next, we're given a standard deviation. Finally, the t statistic, or the test statistic in this case, is not shown to us, nor is the two-sided alternative. We are given the greater than alternative and the less than alternative. And frankly, this is the next easiest thing to solve. What we know from the greater than and less than alternative is that both of those have to add up to one because we are either above or below the test statistic and the probability of that has to add up to one. When we look at the two-sided alternative, we can simply take the smallest alternative and times it by two. If you take 0 0.0033 and times it by two, you will get the two-sided alternative. So the two-sided alternative is pretty easy to find right here. And this is also known as the does not equals alternative. It is always twice the smallest p-value. But this leaves one last difficult thing to find. The last thing for us to find here is the test statistic. And we need to know the formula we're using. So let's go ahead and take a look at the formula. Now with the formula right here, we need to use our sample mean minus our hypothesized mean over the standard deviation divided by the square root of n. And always make sure to do these carefully. A lot of math errors happen right here, but just work carefully and you should get the result of negative 2.944. And it's important to note that this is negative because our actual estimate is below the hypothesized value. And so when we're lower than what we hypothesize it to be, we get a negative test statistic. Why is it a T? It's a T because we're dealing with the mean and we don't know the true standard deviation. We just have a standard deviation from our sample. So with that in mind, the T statistic is negative 2.944, and that's pretty large. That is pretty extreme. As you can see, the P values are very small, 0 0.0066 for the two-sided, the does not equals alternative, and 0 0.0033 for the less than. And now the best thing to do just to confirm your answer is to go ahead and plot it. If you take your T statistic and plot it, you can actually see the P values. And this just lets you understand that you have found the right result right here, because if your p-values are small, your t statistics gonna have to be large. Also note that your less than alternative is the smallest one, and that corresponds to the graphic.